Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be talking about DSLR filmmaking. I'm just going to go over what you need and also some post-production tips. I'm not going to go over angles or anything like that or acting. So, when you first start out, the camera I suggest buying is either a Canon T2i or 550D in Europe or the Nikon D3100. They're both re they're relatively cheap for a uh, um, DS D DSLR. You might not think $800 is cheap, but if you look at some of the other cameras, it's going to seem really cheap for you. But even though they're a lot cheaper than the other cameras, they shoot almost as good. Like the Canon 5D is $2,500. And it only shoots a little better than a Canon T2i, which is what I'm shooting with right now. And when you're buying lenses, I would go for a Canon 50mm f1.8, and the f is an f stop, and that means how low the aperture can go, which means how the lower the aperture, the wide, more wide open the um, iris opens. So that means the lower the aperture, the better you can shoot in the dark. Like right now, there's just one light over there and the light from outside and my shutter speed is pretty fast and I'm still picking up a lot of light so I definitely suggest a lens with a low aperture um, as far as audio I'm using the Canon T2i onboard mic and it's really crappy as you can probably tell from my voice I'm about 10 feet away so I suggest buying the Rode video mic there's two Rode video mics. There's a Rode video mic Pro and the Rode video mic. One is $150 and the second one is $200. I would go with the Pro because there's DB options and that's decibels and you can really take away some of the noise. And then, and that's just an onboard mic. It plugs right into the side of the camera and then it sits on top of your camera. If you're looking for more professional audio, like on a boom pole, I would go with the Zoom H4n, and that's about $300, which is kind of pricey, and obviously I don't have all this equipment because I'm cheap, but yeah, that allows you to record audio separately, and it it's apparently a really good audio recorder, so I definitely suggest that. Um, if you're going to shoot a lot in the daylight, I suggest getting a viewfinder, which fits onto the back. Um, of your 3 inch LCD screen which most of them have and it's basically like a viewfinder on a camera so you can look through it because in daylight it's really hard to see and tell exposure and all that um, so now we're gonna go look at some post-production um, assets and editing systems and maybe some render settings too now we're gonna take a look at some post-production assets we're going to go over the three main editing programs that people use, and they are Sony Vegas, Adobe After Effects, and Final Cut Pro. If you're looking to just edit some clips and make it really simple but still get the professional look, I really suggest Sony Vegas. And we're going to go ahead and open this up, but if you're looking for effects and just compositing a few clips, Adobe After Effects is a really good choice. It's not an editor, you can edit in it but I think it's really hard to use unless you're doing just some 30 second clips with a lot of effects and maybe some motion tracking and stuff. Um, if you're looking for the most professional look and the most professional assets, I suggest Final Cut Pro, but unfortunately it's only for Macs. But we're going to go ahead and jump into Sony Vegas because that's what I'm most used to and I think it's the most simple but it's still a lot better than Windows Movie Maker or anything like that. I'm not going to go over any actual editing, I'm just going to go over some settings and maybe trying to get that film look. So, when you open up Sony Vegas, you're going to import your media. I'm just going to import a video of my friend Eric from right here. And, sorry, my computer's really slow. There we go. So once it's in your project media box thing you're gonna drag it down to your timeline and so it's gonna look pixelated right now because I have the quality and draft but um, what you're first gonna wanna do is go to project video properties and you're gonna check everything basically um, so you're gonna check did you record it in 
1920 by 1080, so basically 1080p. So leave it at that. Leave it at progressive scan or else you'll get um, those weird jagged edges. Um, it, de te it depends on what frame rate you co recorded it in. These DSLRs, most of them record in 23 frames per second or 24 film. 29, which is just basic video, and then 60 FPS, which is for like slow motion or if you want to really capture all the detail. So I recorded this clip in 29, so I'm going to leave it at that. Pixel format, 32-bit, um, gives you a little more color. I really don't know what that does. Full resolution rendering quality, you obviously want them best. Motion blur, Gaussian. Deinterlace method, do not deinterlace unless you have if you have those jagged edges when you play it, um, I suggest putting it on interpolate fields. Um, but I, I don't have those, so I'm going to put it on none. You can always start all new projects with these settings. Then go to audio. You want it at 44,100 um, um, hertz a second, or hertz. Bit depth, thir um, 16. Resample and stretch quality, you want them best. And then that's it for this so just press OK now we're gonna go over some film effects so in film you usually it's there's an aspect ratio called anamorphic and to get that in Sony Vegas you're just gonna click on event pan slash crop I think there's a better way to do this but this is how I do it um, over here size about center you want that unchecked lock aspect ratio want that unchecked and you're gonna go to height and don't worry this will not change your video quality and I usually do it at about 790, so do 790 and then click enter. And as you can see, that just brought down the black bars. And sometimes when you're watching movies, you can see those. And then that's not a very good angle, so I'm just going to position Eric. That looks okay right there. Um, okay, so then I'm going to X out of this. And I can't really show you the film color correction in here because there's a green screen in the background. But I'm just going to go to Video FX, go to Color Curves, Reset to None, and then drag that onto your clip. And then you're going to put it on RGB. You're going to drag this up a little bit to what looks right, and then this down a little bit. And then you're going to go to Red drag it up a little bit down a little bit then green and so on um, there is a more in-depth tutorial for this but I'm just going through the basics and just trying to get it look looking a little better I'm not trying to make it look by like film I'm just trying to make it look a little better so that looks pretty good right there if we go to best Yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. So, um, now I'm going to actually chroma key it just to see how it turns out. If you're looking to green screen, definitely go for After Effects because it has a plugin called Keylight 1.2 and that's really useful. So, let's go ahead and go to um, chroma key. That's actually not in here, so we have to go track FX. Sony Chroma Keyer, then press OK, and then we're going to do a color picker, click this, we're going to go over to our video and click right there, so that didn't work because we're in Sony Vegas, but we're just going to try to mess around with it a little, and try to get that black gone, let's, let's actually see Eric, there we go. So that's actually not looking that bad for Sony Vegas. There we go. We're just going to leave it right there. So as you can see, it's a it's a fair key. It's not that great. But um so let's just add something in the background really fast. So I'm going to import a picture. Let's import this Audi R8. So, um, you want to put this under. Yeah, 
And there you go. <laughs> it keyed out even the black bars. We would have to set this also to... One second, just let me do that. There we go. That works a little better. So now we're going to render this out. Another thing you can do is right click before we render and go to pro right click the video clip, go to properties and go to disable resample. And then you're going to go to render as this little blue button or file render as. And then you're going to want to put it in MP4 if you're using this kind of footage. I know it's giant file sizes, but if you're really looking for that film quality, then you're going to want to go with MP4. Um, so click custom. Again, custom frame size, same. Profile main. Frame rate depends on what you recorded it in. So remember, I recorded this in 30 FPS. Um, leave it at progressive scan. Um, number of reference frames to use deblocking filter. And then switch it from constant bitrate to um, variable, variable bitrate. And then go to 14 million. I go pretty high. You don't have to go that high. 7 million is probably good enough. I haven't really noticed a difference between 7 million and 14 million. I just like to go that extra length to make it the best. Go to audio, 44,100 um, hertz. And then go and leave that at 128,000. Project, video rendering quality best. You can always save this as a template by clicking save template. Then press OK and render and then you're good. So that's all for today, but if you would like to learn more about DSLR filmmaking and the actual production process, process such as casting, cinematography, directing, location scouting, you can always message in the comment section below for another video. Thanks, and I'll see you later.